Hey, good Sunday evening, everybody. I got an update here for you on the tropics and what we're seeing out there and what we're going to kind of probably encounter and expect over the next week or so. And things uh, are continuing to stay active. In fact, I would argue this is the most active it's been uh, here this hurricane season. We had a slow start to things, but things obviously have really ramped up over the past couple of weeks uh, with Helene specifically being kind of the big thing that we just went through. Uh, and again, just unfortunately devastating impacts to inland portions of the Carolinas uh, and Georgia and obviously coastal impacts through Florida as well with that storm and even up through Tennessee uh, and portions of Kentucky and the Virginias uh, have uh, ongoing power out power outages due to what Helene brought. Now, unfortunately, because of Helene, uh, there's a lot of kind of uh, buzz around uh, the potential for another storm in the Gulf. And I can almost guarantee you, you've probably seen some crazy Facebook posts. Uh, you've probably seen some crazy YouTube videos and uh, crazy just things all over the place saying another big storm just like Helene is coming. Uh, and I'm here to kind of give you some reassurance while also keeping you on guard because uh, while most of that is really just absolutely not true, there is some truth in the fact that we do need to watch the Gulf of Mexico for another storm potential, uh, but I don't want anybody in the Carolinas through uh, Virginia, Tennessee to be thinking that this is going to be a repeat of Helene. That is absolutely uh, very unlikely, or I'll just let me phrase that. That's not going to happen, okay? We're not going to have a repeat of Helene. Uh, Helene is really, again, a, a once in a generation type of event, uh, the impacts that we saw there. Now, could we see a hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico? Uh, it's a possibility, but uh, again, I think uh, there, there's a lot of more moving parts here than we had with Helene. So I'm going to go ahead and give you all that information. Uh, now, if you're new to the channel and you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Uh, and just to introduce myself for everyone new, because we have gained a lot of subscribers recently. Uh, welcome aboard. My name is Gerald. I'm a meteorology major at the University of North Carolina, Charlotte here uh, in my junior year. So getting close to having that uh, final piece of paper here within uh, hopefully about a year and a half or so. Uh, so again, I know a lot of times when you're watching somebody talk about the weather, you kind of want to know, well, what qualifies this person to do it? Uh, well, there you go. That's that's my qualification for you. So uh, let's go ahead and start to diving on into things. And again, if you haven't already subscribed, do so. Like the video, comment, you know, all of the normal things uh, that uh, I ask you at the beginning of videos. So let's start with satellite. Imagery. And you'll notice uh, it's kind of, you know, a bit of a mess down here into portions of uh, the Caribbean. You'll notice a whole bunch of thunderstorm activity down here. And this is kind of a continuation of that Central American gyre that we've been uh, seeing. The same kind of setup that brought Helene not long ago uh, is kind of re-emerging in the same part of the world here. Uh, and uh, again, is bringing concern for some folks here that there could potentially be another storm. Now, outside of there, there are other areas we're watching. We've got uh, a hurricane up into uh, portions of uh, the uh, North Atlantic here. That luckily is Hurricane Isaac, not going to be a problem. We have Tropical Storm Joyce out here, uh, also not going to be a problem. And then we now have officially a uh, brand new Tropical Depression 12. And this is uh, one of the reasons I'm, I'm giving you a video tonight uh, is because again, we do have a new storm that has formed out here. Uh, and you can see that on the latest NHC map here. Down here we see 12. Uh, again, only 35 mile an hour Tropical Depression currently, so not really bringing any big time impacts to anybody, luckily. Uh, and uh, also isn't really expected to in the long run. But there is another area behind that we're watching, a little uh, yellow box you'll notice with a 30% chance of development in the next seven days. And then obviously what's probably really catching your eye uh, is this area in the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico with uh, a 50% chance of development throughout the next week. And again, we're going to dive through all of that. Uh, but I want to go ahead and start with kind of the things that we can quickly discuss and go ahead and just mark off the list of concerns. Number one, Hurricane Isaac out here, or now Tropical Storm Isaac, I should say, rather, my bad, it has been downgraded, uh, is uh, going to move on out to sea and not be a problem. There you go. That's what you need to know about Isaac. We'll move on. Uh, Tropical Storm Joyce, uh, a real shell of itself, a very weak storm, becoming a remnant low, not going to cause any problems. All right, mark that one off the list. Uh, now let's get down to the things that are probably a little bit more interesting to talk about. Uh, here we go. Tropical Depression 12 just formed and is expected to become a major hurricane this week. By Friday, uh, expecting a 120 mile per hour Category 3 major hurricane in the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, and this would take on our next name on the list, which is going to be Kirk. So likely to become hurricane, potentially major hurricane Kirk. The good news is you look at the map here, uh, and generally speaking, the cone here is really you know far from any sort of land. And I think that'll be a theme uh, with the future track of Kirk, probably not really impacting anybody besides maybe some shipping out here, uh, but no, no direct impacts from Kirk. 
All right, behind it, another area to watch, a disturbance out here with a 30% chance of development in the next seven days. Now, this one, I think we should keep a closer eye on to. Now, most of the models do bring this out to sea, and we'll talk about this, uh, but a couple ensemble members try to keep this a little bit further south uh, and when they give it a higher likelihood of uh, impacting somebody well on down the road. But the good news, uh, probably a week plus from any sort, probably really even 10 days plus from any sort of impacts to land, should that bring a more southern route. But again, an out to sea track is the most likely scenario with that system. All right, let's talk about this kind of cluster of uh, storms out here into the Atlantic and uh, give you the latest. So this is the brand new GFS model. I'm going to go ahead and circle uh, Tropical Storm Joyce soon to be Tropical Storm Kirk, and then our disturbance with a 30% chance of, de of development. So we've got them lined up here, one, two, three. Joyce, not a problem, again, curving out to sea. Uh, so really we can just follow these other two disturbances on the map, and you'll notice as we pull things ahead into time, uh, again, Kirk deepening pretty rapidly and becoming a hurricane likely by the middle of this week with pressures uh, down below 970 millibars, I think is gonna be a pretty likely scenario, and behind it, uh, here comes what could potentially be our next storm. This could be either Tropical Storm Leslie or Milton, depending on if our Gulf Storm takes a name, which again, we'll get to the Gulf Storm here in just a second. I uh, just want to get this out of the way for you really quickly. Uh, so again, another another storm on the horizon. The good news with Kirk, again, pulling on out to sea, uh, but uh, that storm behind it, you'll notice on the GFS, also pulls out to sea and kind of weakens pretty rapidly. Unfortunately, some of the models show a bit of a different scenario, and I can show you that right now. Let me pull up the European from uh, this afternoon and we'll take a look at it. And uh, you're kind of already getting a spoiler alert there, but uh, you'll notice a, a bit of a different track from the European. So the same thing for Kirk, nonetheless, that uh, strengthens quickly into a hurricane and moves out to sea. But the storm behind it takes a much further south route here compared to uh, the GFS and kind of works right through the main development region, uh, deepens, strengthens into a hurricane. And 10 days from now, uh, is not too far from the Lesser Antilles. So need to keep a closer eye on that storm. But again, the good news is well away from any sort of impacts in the near term. Uh, probably wouldn't see impacts for more than 10 days. So uh, we'll, we'll monitor it. All right, this is, again, our new tropical depression forecasted intensity. Very likely this gets to major hurricane status. Almost all of our hurricane models get it there. Uh, but again, luckily, <clears throat> excuse me, not going to be a problem as we look at the latest tracks. Again, all of these just keep it well out into the Atlantic throughout the next seven days uh, and even beyond that. So that is the good news there. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, let's take a look at our uh, next um, kind of, uh, or not our next topic per se, but uh, a couple more things with those storms are the ensembles. These are the GFS ensembles. Again, you'll notice not a single ensemble member bringing uh, a landfalling system anywhere here uh, in this part of the Atlantic through the next 10 days. However, again, we'll take a look at uh, the European ensembles and let me back things up a little bit here. Uh, I'll start this loop and kind of watch what happens. Again, you'll notice our two distinct areas. Uh, we've got, uh, this is our current tropical depression. This is our area of interest behind it. And watch what happens uh, specifically with that area of interest at the bottom of your screen. You'll notice as this move moves ahead into time, the European ensembles are much further south with it um, with uh, its track. And the main reason for that is they just develop it later on. So it wants to curve north a little bit later on uh, and, uh, you know, brings a, a further south track. But even that doesn't bring impacts at all within the next 10 days. So uh, we'll keep you up to date there. But uh, again, no direct threats out into the main development region of the Atlantic, even though we do have tropical formation beginning. All right, the reason probably many of you are here, the Gulf Storm and kind of what we're expecting here, latest uh, kind of look at satellite again, or our visible imagery, and you'll notice, uh, yeah, we've got a lot of cloud cover down here, a lot of stormy activity, uh, a continuation again of this Central American gyre, which uh, is basically just a cell here uh, that uh, brings, you know, vorticity and thunderstorm activity, which oftentimes leads to development. And that's exactly what happened uh, a week ago. We had Helene form down here, basically in the same area, uh, and then to pull north. So uh, the big question is, is it going to do it again? Is our next storm going to pull the exact same maneuver? Uh, and I think the short answer is no, but with caveats. Again, we're not expecting another Helene. We're not expecting uh, a devastating storm that is going to you know, be one that is remembered for a very long time. But I do think it is a possibility that we get a storm to develop. However, the track would be different with this one compared to Helene. I feel pretty confident in that. 
Now, uh, we'll take a look at some models here. Uh, now, even though this could develop in the same region as Helene and in a similar way, it's kind of a different setup in the sense that we have uh, all sorts of different types of uh, vort, uh, vort maxes out here or just high levels of spin in the atmosphere uh, that could lead to tropical cyclone formation. And you can see that here in the latest GFS, we've got multiple areas of spin, but what happens is uh, this area down into the Caribbean begins to get its act together during the middle of this week. Now, you'll notice we also have another area in the Gulf of Mexico uh, that, uh, you know, is also showing up on the map here. Um, but kind of what happens here, and I'll move this further ahead into time for you, uh, is these areas of spin try to get their act together, uh, but kind of struggle to do so. And by the time we get to this Friday, we've got two separate areas in the Gulf of Mexico, one just off the coast of Texas uh, and one right into the center of uh, the Gulf of Mexico, almost like two eyes looking at you here. Uh, and, you know, one of them could try to develop, but oftentimes what happens when you have uh, these areas of vorticity that try to get into cyclogenesis close to each other, one can kind of inhibit the other from developing, and sometimes they both inhibit each other from developing, which can kind of mess with the environment here for strengthening, which obviously would be a good thing for us. Now, in the long run, the GFS does kind of get a more defined low with that system further east and forms a tropical system, uh, but then kind of stalls it out a little bit, meanders it, uh, and then kind of just works it through the southeast as a bigger area of spin. Uh, but this is this is well on down the road, folks. This is you know seven, ten days plus out, uh, and would be very unlikely to kind of happen exactly how this model is showing it. So uh, we'll show you another model here looking at the European for the same time frame. And you'll notice, again, still seeing some areas of vorticity down here into uh, the Caribbean and up into the Gulf of Mexico, but just not nearly as strong. Uh, and again, it kind of just congeal together. It's just this weird blob of spin uh, and, and you know, it, it just struggles to break off and form its own thing. Now, further on down the road, about a week from now, you'll notice these two kind of become just this big elongated area of vorticity, which again would take a lot of time to kind of get further defined and form into an actual storm system. So pretty different than the setup for Helene in that sense, but the European does try to get something going uh, and pushes it east through the state of Florida as, uh, excuse me, a weak storm or maybe uh, a just an open wave even. So uh, you'll notice some differences there, but uh, I will mention that the overall environment here for development is relatively conducive again should one of these areas of spin try to get its act together uh, and should the other area kind of not inhibit it uh, and you can see that here on our wind shear map you'll uh, notice that uh, we do have uh, currently kind of some areas of divergence in the atmosphere uh, through portions of the Caribbean. This will kind of help to maybe, um, let me uh, redraw some of these. Uh, there we go. This, uh, again, could lead to some fanning out above some of these showers in the Caribbean, and that could lead to low pressure trying to form at the surface. But in the upper levels, uh, we have this big time upper level ridge uh, showing up, which is bringing some wind shear here through portions of uh, the Northern Caribbean through Cuba, the, the uh, Hispaniola through the Bahamas, uh, which again is helping kind of limit any kind of uh, development here around that ridge, but to the south of it where we have a little bit of clearing, again, could try to see something sneak up on us uh, here in the near term. And you see that on the GFS, that's exactly what happens. That area of spin gets its act together. And then by the middle of this week, conditions become more conducive. And this is when we'll need to watch it, I think. Uh, if we have a tropical storm at this point by this Wednesday, Thursday, Friday here into the Western Caribbean, then we could have a bigger concern on our hand on down the road. Uh, and again, you'll notice a low amount of wind shear here, even and some divergence aloft could lead to some strengthening. Uh, and if that happens, and again, much like Helene, this will get into the Gulf as a stronger storm uh, and have a better shot of, you know, moving or excuse me, strengthening into a bigger deal, potentially a hurricane. Uh, but the GFS, again, it struggles to really fully develop the storm here uh, and stays with some relatively favorable wind shear, but then kind of gets thrown into some less favorable, favorable wind shear on down the road about a week from now. Uh, and kind of gets shredded apart a little bit by some upper level winds. Now, uh, humidity wise, uh, I will say we do have plenty of moisture in the atmosphere out here for tropical development. As I move this ahead, you'll notice that a lot of green showing up near that area of low pressure, not a lot of dry air to inhibit it. Uh, but uh, then it moves north through the Gulf of Mexico, tries to hold on to that uh, pocket of moisture, uh, and eventually, again, runs into kind of some dry air here near the continental United States, uh, wraps it up, and then kind of 
uh, get shredded apart by that dry air. So not, not a perfect environment, but again, it's similar to Helene in the sense that if it can get its act going uh, sooner on, then it'll have a higher chance of uh, developing into a stronger storm. Uh, but again, I don't think environmental conditions are pristine as they were for Helene uh, and like we saw uh, about a week or so ago. All right, now track wise, again, a lot of people on edge here into the Carolinas and Georgia, but uh, the good news is, again, I really don't think we're going to have a track similar to Helene. Just to remind everybody, I'll draw the track that Helene took. Basically, did uh, this maneuver right here and already looking at this map you can tell that's not going to happen and you might be wondering why well we've got this big area of high pressure or some ridging here uh, at 500 millibars and basically this acts as a bit of a shield from a storm system now uh, we could see let me actually go ahead and draw that back for you there we go. Uh, now we could see the storm get pulled up near that ridge and then kind of blocked here. That is po a possibility. And then it's possible that the ridge kind of slowly lets up and then the storm, you know, begins to move inland and could move over portions of the southeast. That is a possibility. Uh, but again, if that were the case, the storm likely wouldn't be nearly as strong as Helene was. Uh, it would uh, not have kind of that precursor rain event like we saw with Helene uh, and just overall would not be as big of a deal. Um, and uh, would, you know, again, just be a much more mi a minor event than Helene. And I think no matter what, we're going to have a more minor event uh, than Helene for almost everybody. Uh, however, again, still need to watch it. And uh, here's one of the reasons. We'll take a look at some of these ensembles. Uh, these are the GFS ensembles. You'll notice here comes a storm out of the Caribbean, tries to get going, crosses into the Gulf. Uh, and we do have some members here uh, that develop it into a stronger system and then pull it back towards the state of Florida uh, and then kind of into the southeastern part of the country. But all things considered, you'll notice kind of a spaghetti mess currently. So just a lot of uncertainty in the exact track this will take, the exact strength it'll have. Uh, and you can even see that here on the European. I'll go ahead and start the same loop. And uh, on the European, it's even less excited about development. Although I'll mention the European has been overly conservative, basically all hurricane season. Uh, but you get the idea here, just kind of a lot of loops, a lot of spins uh, here into the Gulf as that big ridge parks itself over the country and kind of prevents it from moving into the Southeast. Um, so right now, I think the most likely scenario is probably we do get tropical development, probably a tropical storm. This gets into the Gulf, meanders a little bit, and then probably something like this track. Now, obviously that's not going to be the exact track by any means, but I think that's the most likely scenario. I don't foresee right now a major hurricane. Uh, I don't see this moving up through the mountains of the Southeast. Uh, I generally think right now the most likely scenario would be a tropical storm, maybe a hurricane, but that's an outside shot right now uh, that probably, you know, gets stuck in the Gulf a little bit, meanders around, has to fight some shear on down the road and then maybe impacts the state of Florida. But again, it could take a track. Uh, something a little bit more like this, meander around and then kind of loop out this way. Uh, but either way, long term, I think uh, we have a storm that struggles with steering currents uh, and then eventually gets shoved east by some sort of troughing mechanism. Um, so that's, uh, that's kind of what we're watching right now, folks. Again, just want to give you a quick uh, evening update. A lot of people on edge, and rightfully so, again, with everything that Helene brought. But I don't want anybody to be uh, concerned or worried. Just need to stay uh, with uh, kind of an eye on, on the maps here. And just keep coming back for those updates, and I'll give them to you. Uh, also, you can follow me on social media. I uh, post updates there for the weather. Uh, I've got uh, X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it, Facebook, uh, you know, all the things linked in the description. Uh, so go check that out. Alrighty, folks, again, have a wonderful rest of your Sunday evening. Uh, try to enjoy it and uh, hopefully continuing that recovery process in the Southeast. Again, have a blessed one and I'll see you all tomorrow.